In this short video, I'd like to highlight some of the main issues around academic identity. First of all, it's worth noticing there's not an agreed definition on what academic identity actually means. However, it is a recurring term in recent literature within the broad topics of personal and professional development and self actualizations professionalism and belonging to communities or practice. This lack of clarity may sound surprising, especially given the fact this module pledges that you, as participants, will be exploring academic identities. Certainly not a good start, you may think. So, what shall we actually explore? Well, rather than focusing on what and seek a generalised and global definition, I'd like to suggest focusing on the how we can actually make sense of these terms in the relation to ourselves and our being professionals working in academia. Also, it would be interesting to briefly see why academic identity is hard to pin down. Firstly, etymology can give us some indications on the historical baggage of the phrase. Academic could be the adjective related to academia and establishes the roots of Western knowledge, learning and teaching in the training space, the gymnasium, where Plato used to teach just outside Athens. Let's fast forward this to the present. Now, rather than a physical space, academia came to mean a blurry system of social constructions and relationships shaped of power and authority, which are somehow centered around the creation and dissemination of knowledge. Besides being an adjective, academic is also the noun, which indicates a player or a component of the social network that is somehow part of the system or relationships. This brings us to question or issue number one in this quest. How do we recognize this system of power, authority and neural relationships that we call academia? How do we know one belong to the system or not? Now, to attempt providing an answer to this, let's construct the premise that academia is formalized through a system of organizations rather than individuals only. Therefore, a player within this com complex system of relationships is somehow affiliated to one or more of these institutions. If it's true that an academic is part of an organization or affiliated to, then an academic is a professional by definition. This is something we can recognize, for example, by referring to a functionalist model put forward by Barber in 1963. So the professional dimensions identified in these models are a high degree of generalized and systematic knowledge. Number two, primary orientation to the community interest rather than the individual self-interest. Number three, a high degree of self-control of behavior through codes of ethics. And we will be covering these extensively later on in the module. Finally, four, a system of rewards, which can be monetary or honorary, that is primarily a set of symbols of work achievement. Now, at this stage, I'm pretty sure you will see yourself fitting within this general functionalist definition of a professional. Therefore, a good start for exploring your own academic identity would be mapping these dimensions to your existing professional being within your academic context. Okay, let's now look at the term identity. And here lies another slight complication, as this is used and understood into contrasting ways. First, identity is what makes you what you are and not someone else. We use identity documents to certify we are who we say we are. Also, each one of us is unique, from the DNA sequence to the system of beliefs and life expectations and experiences 
uh, which have shaped and shape our existence. On the other side, and interestingly, identity is also what makes us part of a social group, of a category. All of us, we identify ourselves as belonging to the Homo sapiens species. Uh, some of us identify themselves as belonging to a gender, uh, an ethnic or a national group. Similarly, if we look at the world around us, we know a chair is a chair and is not a sofa or a stool. A horse is a mammal and not an insect and so forth. Now, some of these identification exercises are more obvious than others. In fact, if we map ourselves or others against social constructions, well, the process of identification can be quite tricky indeed. How do we know Dario is not a quantum physicist, a Buddhist or a time traveller? Coming back to the initial set of questions then, how do you know you are an academic. The activities that follow and our classroom discussions should guide you through this exploration. In the meantime, you will have to make choices and decide which tools and theoretical frameworks you will need for the investigation of your own professional identity.